The time has come. We are in the year 2025, and it's about time to delve into the basics of smart home. In this video, I want to show you how you can install Home Assistant on all kinds of computers and most importantly, the different installation options available for Home Assistant. So we will look at NAS systems. We will look at PCs. We will look at Raspberry Pis and all of that in this video, as always after the intro. Enjoy. First of all, I would like to start with the various possibilities of installing Home Assistant. Basically, we actually have only two possible differences. On one hand, there is what I would simply call a, the complete Home Assistant system. This means Home Assistant manages itself by the Kuhn Home, updates itself, and most importantly, can also install candid additional large add-ons. In simple terms, this only works if you really uh, have full access to your system. So if you have a spare computer on which you want to install it, him, or if you have a Raspberry Pi on which you want to run only this, then it makes sense. Otherwise, there is the light version of Home Assistant, which is the very simple Home Assistant system with a dashboard and some integrations. However, you need to either host this integration separately somewhere, or they are already hosted somewhere if we are talking about cloud services. This system, in turn, can be easily installed on all kinds of systems. You can actually install it on your NAS at home. You can also install it on a Raspberry Pi, additionally on a home server, and so on and so forth. If you ask me now what I would personally start with, then I would um, say for beginners, you should definitely get your own computer and on which the complete Engwoom install. It's much easier there. You have significantly more options to install additional add-ons. But maybe you just want to take a look at Home Assistant. You have a NAS at home and want to use it for testing first. Then you can also do that with the light version of Home Assistant. OK, then I would say, let's just start with the Raspberry Pi, because I would say it's probably the entry point for most people, even though I would now rather recommend a dedicated thin client, especially a computer with Intel L100, simply has significantly more performance I, and can offer you much more possibilities, especially if you want to get into the topic of, of voice assistance. Just briefly, before we continue, I want to express my huge thanks for watching this video, and for that reason, I'm displaying an Amazon voucher here. The first person who wants to can redeem it. Have fun with it at this point. And if you feel like having the chance to get an Amazon voucher next time, feel free to click on subscribe. Then you'll get a notification when I upload a new video and you might be the next one to snag that Amazon voucher. So thank you and let's continue with the video. Okay, so starting with the Raspberry Pi. I'll link it for you down in the description. This here is a Pi 4, but theoretically you can use anything from the Raspberry Pi 3 to the Raspberry Pi 5. Of course, they have different performances. I would say you should use at least a Raspberry Pi 4 the Raspberry Pi 3 is just so slow that it makes the installation and later operation no fun at all. In addition to the actual Raspberry Pi, you will of course also need a USB-C power supply. It's best to use the one that comes with the Pi. I'll link it for you down in the description. And to install the operating system, you need an SD card. In this case, it's a micro SD card. Accordingly, for the one-time installation of the operating system, MUT, you will also need an Pico an adapter from micro SD to SD here, yeah, or a USB adapter so that you can connect it to your Kata's computer. You only need this once just for the installation. As I said, I'll link all the options in the description. After that, you will need a computer and the Raspberry Pi Imager, a tool that you can download for free for both Mac and Linux, as well as Windows. In this interface, the first step is to select which Pi you have in front of you. In my case, it's the Raspberry Pi 4, and then I can oop, select Home Assistant in this category here. Then I select the connected SD card on which I want to install the operating system, and I can start the flashing process. Now the system is downloaded and directly installed on the SD card, which we then need to insert into the Raspberry Pi. After that, connect the Raspberry Pi to power and a network connection, and then plug it into your router. Now you have two different options. Either you connect a display to the whole setup, then you will directly see the IP address A that your router has assigned to the Raspberry Pi. Or alternatively, you can check on your router's interface 
or use an external tool like a LAN scanner by Itendithendin to find out what IP address this Raspberry Pi has now. Once you have found it out, we'll enter it in the browser, followed by a colon and the port 8123. If everything worked, you will now land on this interface. Home Assistant is now being installed and set up in the background. Once that is completed, your BIM, you can then click on the Einar button here labeled Start My Smart Home. Give your initial user a name, a password, set the country, and you will already see the first devices available in your environment that could theoretically be integrated into your new smart home, and you will now land on the Home Assistant interface. However, if you don't have a Raspberry Pi and want to start directly, it, I would recommend this computer here. This is a passively cooled Intel N100 housed in a metal case. That's the processor that's inside here. It is super fast and has a lot of performance, which you can make good use of later if you want to run more complex things in your smart home, like a Plex server or even a voice assistant or a local AI. Installing this one is a little more involved, but not really complicated. On the underside, there are four screws that you need to unscrew. Depending on what kind of computer you have, it might be a bit different, but you definitely need to open it up. And when we look inside, we immediately see several options for installing a hard drive. You might only have one option. In any case, you need to get a suitable hard drive on which we can later install the operating system. If you have a connector like this, it will probably be a SATA SSD. If you have a connector like this, then it's probably a PCI NVMe SSD. I will definitely link both variants in the video description. Depending on which of the two SSDs you get, I would strongly recommend that you also get a corresponding USB adapter so that you can easily install the operating system on this SSD initially. There are these adapters here, which are more for NVMe SSDs or these adapters, which are intended for regular SATA SSDs. So you take your corresponding SSD, insert it into the adapter, connect the whole thing to your PC, and now download the tool Balena Etcher. It's available for Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. Now you start it and download the Home Assistant OS. Depending on what kind of computer you have, there can be different types because depending on what kind of processor you have, you need a different type of operating system. In my case, however, it's the x86 variant, which I will also link for you. So if you're unsure, it's best to get in exactly um, this computer here, then it will definitely work quite easily. So next, you select the file you just downloaded in Balena Etcher, then choose the connected hard drive where you want to install everything and start the writing process. Once it's completed, you can remove the SSD from the card reader and install it permanently in your computer here. After that, close the case again, and we're actually already done. Now it's similar to the Raspberry Pi. You at least take the power plug and the network plug, connect everything to your router and turn on the computer. Either you have also connected a display cable beforehand, in which case you will now see on the connected screen which IP address this device has received. Alternatively, for team, you can simply look at your router interface or use a network scanner or to find the IP address of Home Assistant. Again, enter the IP address plus the port, that is colon 8123 in the browser, and then Home Assistant will be installed in the background. You can start the setup, give your user a username, a password, set the country, and then you will also see all the devices that were found in the home network. Finally, we also want to install the whole thing on a Synology. However, theoretically, this is also possible on almost any other system. For example, I also have a TerraMaster NAS where the process would be similar. After you have logged into your server, first check if there is an app store. If there is one, search directly for Home Assistant, and if it exists, you can install it directly, and then you're done. Alternatively, there is sometimes an app called Docker. Simply put, Woom, it's a type of virtualization through which you can also install Home Assistant. For that, you would need to start up an appropriate container. The easiest way, I would say, is if you copy the code from the video description and see if there is some kind of terminal available on the web interface. You then open this terminal, paste the command, and Home Assistant should automatically be downloaded and started. After that, you should land directly on the setup interface of Home Assistant similar to the other computers. However, if we compare the two here, you will notice slight differences in the settings. 
as you can additionally install add-ons on one, but not on the other. That's why I would recommend starting with a Home Assistant OS if, as it is significantly easier to set up. For all those who want to take it a step further and say, I want to install additional things on my computer and I don't want to waste my entire computer by only installing the Home Assistant OS on it. For those people, they can, for example, install Proxmox on an Intel N100. I'll link you to a tutorial I made where I show you how you can install Proxmox very easily and additionally get the Home Assistant OS running on it. Otherwise, that's it for now with this video and the setup. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe even found it helpful. If you have any questions about this topic, feel free to write them in the comments. I try to answer everyone who has a question. And if you don't want to miss anything and are eager to dive deeper into the topic of Home Assistant, then feel free to click subscribe because I publish videos on this topic weekly. So thank you very much for watching and see you next week. Take care and goodbye.